Hi everyone. Today we'll be discussing about how to import a CNC router machine from China or any other country. So a lot of people uh, may like to go to purchase a CNC router from, from other countries because of the worksmanship or due to the manufacturing infrastructure, other quality uh, of the product, or there may not be some specifications not available in his country. So there is various reasons that people may go for import. And uh, the same machine you may be getting in India uh, with a higher cost because it is done by somebody, uh, some agent or someone. So he may have to directly import from the other country, maybe due to the tax, uh, 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 tax and the benefits he is going to get directly, he is going to get from by importing uh, direct, uh, from other country. So because of uh, numerous other reasons, many people may like to import a CNC router machine from uh, China or any other countries. Because I mentioning China because China is the number one import, uh, importer for India for CNC router machine. And many people buy uh, Chinese CNC router machines, even though there is many machines available from other countries like Italy, Germany, and uh, Turkey and many other uh, European and American countries manufacturing CNC router machine. Even machines are available from Korea, Japan, and uh, Taiwan. So uh, most of the machines are imported from those countries to India. So I will be today, I will be explaining uh, about the, what all the importing, uh, how you will find a supplier and how what how you will check the credentials of that uh, supplier or the manufacturer from the other country and uh, what all uh, the prerequisites for you to import a machine to india and also uh, uh, what all documents you require so that you want to clear the uh, clear the consignment and uh, uh, get the uh, machine to your uh, factory to your uh, company and also uh, to look for a clearing and forwarding agent to get all these things done. Okay, so uh, we will open my uh, mind map so that uh, we can I can explain you in detail how we can go about this. Hope that many of you people will be looking for such informations and I also getting constant uh, calls uh, regarding this. Then I thought of I'll put it as a YouTube video so that many people can get benefits out of it. Let us go to the mind map. So how to import a CNC router machine from China or any other countries? So this is mainly with my experience of importing machines from China, I have created this video. So first, uh, to import something, we must have somebody on the other side who has as a manufacturer or supplier for that particular machine. So let us see how we will uh, find those people how we can find those those kind of people so for for most of the people the google is the main source of getting the information so you can search in google okay cnc router manufacturer from some particular country from china from uh, from uh, german from uh, usa like that you can search you will get a lot of informations from a lot of companies website will be popping up so you can click on that and get to those uh, find out uh, some manufacturers and suppliers name and also there is a prominent website uh, uh, the trade portal is available that is alibaba.com where you can also especially when you go for chinese companies you will you can find uh, a lot of uh, manufacturers and suppliers on CNC router from uh, this uh, website, this alibaba.com. And also like that many, uh, many more trade portals are available. You can go to uh, uh, Made in China and so many, uh, so many uh, websites are available. Uh, portals are available, trade portals are available. Even in India Mart also you will find some uh, yes, uh, and Trade India and Indian portals are also available where you can find the name of the 
companies uh, who is supplying or manufacturing CNC router machine from a particular country. And Google, definitely, you'll get a lot of information, okay? So this is the way that you can search for, or you can ask for some reference also from consultant also, you can check with them also how uh, uh, for uh, some reference of CNC uh, router manufacturers or supplier from China. So this is how you can find out because uh, Google definitely you'll find many companies and also Alibaba they are in there also so many companies have been listed and many other trade ports as well. I have not mentioned here it will be available in Google search itself uh, they will be coming prominent and you can get into that portal and search there for CNC router machine and you can get the information. So this is how you can find some manufacturer or supplier. Then second challenge is that how you are going to communicate with these people. So you definitely when you search for their website or uh, in the trade portal, if you find the information, they will be giving uh, their email address or any other contact information where you can uh, chat with them or message them or call them or email them like that. So the first type of communication, everybody will be keeping an email ID with them. So you can just mail to them and find out the detail and what kind of CNC router machine you want. Uh, if you have some specification or if you want to give some information regarding what use or application you want the CNC router machine, you can mail to them. And Skype also very commonly used uh, chat service where you can uh, message your uh, requirement and they will be uh, always uh, in touch with you. Uh, real time communication will happen with the Skype, also WhatsApp, also very common. And uh, WeChat in India nowadays it's not used, but it was one. It was one of the main main chat media and also in messenger also you can message the things and you can also use the phone calls or uh, you can also make skype call also you can make uh, direct phone calls and also you can direct do the uh, uh, text sms also you can do that and also uh, if you are find them in some trade portal like alibaba there is some chat services available you can chat directly with the uh, with the supplier or the manufacturers and can get the details. So this is the way uh, you can communicate and keep the information. And one and the best way of doing is email because once you do with the email, you can see that uh, uh, also check that that email is some um, you know domain connected. That is uh, not a generalized email. That is a company email address. If you are chatting with the company email ID, and then also uh, you can email us. You can keep us a record for your uh, future communications because uh, better uh, you do with email communication, even if it is a little bit of time to reply back to you, but you can uh, keep it as a record that whatever the uh, information you are sharing and uh, whatever the information you are receiving from the supplier side, okay? So uh, after you get the enough information that because whatever the mission you want, and the pricing and all those information you will get. And you, uh, you, uh, before going to purchase, you have to check the credentials of this customer, uh, of this uh, supplier or the manufacturer. So how you will do that, the credential, how you will check the credentials of the supplier. So you can check it uh, in the trade portals and social media and website. You can check how their presence in trade portals. In trade portals, they, some products, they may be gold member or some, uh, how long they are in this uh, doing business with us, that particular trade portal. You can understand how uh, the reliability of that company. Also in social media, also you can find them and you can check the, whether they are active in social medias and what all the uh, no, no, no information floating about this company in the uh, internet. Also, uh, there you can check their website or related uh, um, uh, inter, uh, uh, net uh, based information to check their credentials. And, uh, and also you can directly ask the information from the supplier or the manufacturer himself because uh, the information they are uh, going to, if they have e enough credentials, they will be really happy to provide you the information and 
that can be a main source then only the uh, thing maybe you just want to cross check it for that you may use a, a local agent or uh, somebody you know from that country or an agent who is doing this kind of work you can also rely on those kind of people to make sure that this is a reliable supplier or the manufacturer and also you can check the feedback from their customers you can ask who is all their customers or also through the internet browsing you can also find out the existing customers of this uh, particular company once you okay with the uh, credentials of the company then you can uh, wh what all you have to check actually the, the when you check for the credentials what all you have to check how long they are in their business okay this company how long they are doing the business and also you can get the details about the products the range of products they are dealing with and also which all countries they uh, export export their product which all countries they deal with actually uh, uh, they are not importing they are actually exporting those countries export export to which all countries they are exporting so they can understand uh, their capacity is there any local customers if you are uh, importing to india then you can check whether there is any local customers for uh, them in india and how many people work in that company and and, and any kind of certifications or and they have got all this kind of information you can check in the when while you check for the credentials you can check all those details and uh, then we have to uh, check uh, because they will be uh, giving the performance invoice the invoice according to your uh, requirement like what all the delivery terms they have given to us whether uh, what all payment terms they have given, what the mode of shipping they are going to give all this information we have to discuss in details so in delivery terms we have uh, generally used one that just i am discussing because there is uh, in um, customs uh, jargon there is many uh, uh, delivery terms are available but i am just uh, using only the three terms which is generally used or oh, that is x works when you have to go and pick up the material from the factory itself their factory itself then we call it x works so what are the pricing they are going to give is is uh, the works uh, the cost at their site at their factory so from there whatever the cost incurred that we have to bear so that is x works the pricing so we have to pick up from x works and then fob that is free on board they just ship the material from their their port they are they are responsible uh, uh, till the origin of shipping point from their country when from which port they are just uh, shipping the material they are only responsible to up to that point only that we call free on board once they board the material board the material into the ship they are free so their responsibility uh, ends there then uh, whatever the uh, whatever the charges whatever the cost incurred to ship the material and any other cost will be uh, uh, will be given by the purchaser or the importer himself and the third one is cif that is cost insurance right that you have to uh, here you are paying the cost of the mission also insurance and freight and all the expense expenses till the uh, mission reaches to our port or nearest port that importers importers or buyers nearest port nearest port sorry for that nearest uh, nearest port the uh, the the supplier or the ex exporter is responsible for so this is the three general terms that uh, we use and uh, you can go for xworks or fob or cif of cif these all terms we will mention in our performa invoice so this is the delivery terms available uh, generally used and you you can have many other form of delivery that i am not discussed here if you want to uh, how to want to know all those terms you can uh, refer the uh, internet and also uh, the reliable persons and then the payment terms 
payment terms are uh, there is a letter of credit are available through bank in terms that we do the letter of credit and tt that is uh, uh, i think it is a telex transfer that is the immediate transfer okay you do 100 percent transfer or whatever the terms that you uh, detect uh, with the uh, between uh, supplier and the buyer okay the terms uh, uh, can be advanced some amount of money percentage of amount before dispatch you can do this much of amount and after receiving the documents you can go for the balance amount also like advance and and balance amount after receiving the material immediately or within few months after receiving it's all the terms payment terms uh, is as per the mutual uh, agreement between the two parties that the supplier and buyer so you can also you have to get it mentioned in your performance invoice these payment terms also you can have to put the delivery terms you can have to put the payment terms and also the mode of shipping whether you are you want to take it by air or by the ship this is the two general terms available you can buy land also in some countries it may be available so you can discuss that also by ship uh, you you can send it by as a lcl lcl means uh, you do, don't have a full container load whether it is a 20 feet container or 40 feet container uh, the machine uh, ha, no, is not going to occupy the full container then we call it call it as a less less than container load then call lcl and fcl if it's a full container load then you can book a full container for that for the ship though this is these all terms put in the in your performer invoice here uh, in the first part we discussed about uh, how to find a manufacturer or supplier and how to communicate with the supplier and uh, how to check the credentials and what are points you have to check and uh, also about the delivery terms and payment terms and also the mode of shipping so these are points we discussed in the first part all uh, uh, things you have to prepare uh, before importing SCNC or outer mission that we will be covering in the uh, part two uh, there also we will be discussing about uh, the various documents that we have to get from the importer uh, get from the supplier or the manufacturer so that we can clear these uh, the shipment or the mission in the customs so those documents, uh, uh, basic documents required also has been discussed in the part two. Also, the what are the costs involved in importing the CNC router machine? Because many people think that what are the costs they just see in the website uh, is the cost uh, of the machine. Its actual cost is much more than that because uh, for getting the machine to your place, you, ha you have many other costs on the way. So those costs are discussed in the uh, part two of this video. Also, we have discussed about the requirement uh, need of a clearing and formatting agent to help out with the importing uh, procedures and documents. Thank you. We will see you in the next video, the part two of how to import CNC router from China or any other countries. Thank you.